if you weren't sitting there, I'd be saying that to myself. Inside, inside edition. <laughs> yeah. Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and today I just wanted to make a quick video regarding the panel that Final Fantasy XIV had at PAX East. Now this was hosted by Matt Hilton, Koji Fox, and Naoki Yoshida, of course. Sorry for the quality of the video, I am recording this from PAX East, I don't have my usual setup, so it's just going to be me talking into the camera. Can't handle that, unfortunately. I'll probably try to do something a little bit more involved when I get back. So be on the lookout for that uh, sometime after Monday, probably closer to Tuesday or Wednesday. So uh, it was just a quick Q&A. They took live questions, which was great, you know, because I, you know, I feel like the live letters used to really encapsulate that a lot more, taking like questions a lot better. So it felt more like an old school live letter. They also collected some questions from the panel at PAX East, which by the way, if you're here or if you're thinking about coming because you're in the area, do it because the Square Enix panel is massive and there's a lot of things for you to check out. And then, uh, they, you know, then they just brought one new announcement at the end, which in all honesty, that's really the only thing this video needs to be about. A lot of the questions were questions that were either answered in the last live letter or we know what the usual answer is and we didn't really get much different. Like there's more Hildebrand coming in 3.3. Uh, you know, there's going to be new jobs in the next expansion, but we don't know what they are yet, and we'll find out at Fan Festival. The 7-Eleven event's coming to the U.S. soon. Um, there were some interesting ones, like someone asked for fates for gatherers, crafters. That's a crafterers, yeah. That's one that I haven't heard in a while. Uh, and Yoshifi said, cool, yeah, maybe we'll do that. Uh, he's just worried about monsters coming and attacking the gatherers who are very excited to go gather in this blue area on their mini-map, apparently. Uh, fate names are punny. You know, that's, they've talked about how it's punny in different languages. Uh, there's going to be, you know, they've talked about Doom Train again. Maybe when we go to the Garlean Empire at some point, maybe he'll be flying through the sky. Maybe. There's a lot of maybes. Uh, Eggy Glamour got brought up again. We know the answer to that one. Uh, where they're working on it, they want one in 3.4, I think, and they're going to start with Carbuncle. Uh, Google Quests got brought up again. That was always fun. Uh, not Yoshi P's most uh, favorite kind of quest. He apologized for them, and he says they have quests coming regarding the Moogles. I hope that's not Beast Tribe dailies. Uh, and that we'll probably be able to get revenge on the king, who we met through the uh, through the Heaven's Ward main story. There's a few other announcements, though, that were interesting. There's a new app coming that allows you to connect to your link shells and free companies, as well as your retainers and the market board via, uh, via a mobile app. So you'll be able to stay in communication with that, even when you're someone who's, you know, busy or you're at work. And, you know, I, I, sometimes people use things like Discord and whatnot to do that. But it's nice to have, I guess, something that's directly dedicated to Final Fantasy XIV, keeps things kind of moderated a little bit. Um, what else did they have? Uh, I liked when Koji Fox asked for somebody to stand up like, oh, well, let's take some live questions. Let's get someone in uh, samurai armor. <laughs> and uh, Yoshida was like, oh, no, why do you have to say that? Uh, again, they said they're working on the PSO2 collaboration. They mentioned the Final Fantasy 15 one, but they didn't say there was anything. They didn't give us any solid details. They just said, you know, be on the lookout for something, you know, regarding Final Fantasy 15. Uh, there's somebody asked about the different fruits in Eorzea, and they said that there's no peaches yet. There's apples, oranges, pears, like all that stuff. I don't actually know if there's pears. I actually don't. I, I don't. I don't craft, so of course I don't know. Um, so <laughs> there's no peaches. So uh, Yoshida was like, "Yeah, peaches in 4.0." So if you like peaches, great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything better. Somebody asked about adding new PvP skills. I feel like as a ninja, I'm the only one who's allowed to ask that question. So maybe he was a ninja too, because we got Fetter Ward, and we still have two other skills that barely do anything in the feast. And uh, they said maybe. Maybe there's new skills. Maybe they need to balance the skills that we have come Season 2. Uh, so we'll see. They're just going to really analyze Season 1 first, see what goes on. Uh, also, special effects on armor and weapons. Now, this is something that I ask about a lot. And that's, you know, special effects like, you know added fire damage you know when you're in ice form your first fire three cast will do like you know special effects like if you played 11 like we're on the relics and a lot of the armor just crazy effects that just change the way that you kind of look at a spell or ability and um he actually they didn't actually say they didn't rule it out they said it's not impossible and they're worried about balance which we've heard before we've heard both of those things before but they said they were taking their time with it not oh you know we don't want to do it right now you know, it almost made it sound like it was currently in development, and that could always be the translation between Naoki Yoshida and Koji Fox, and that's just the easiest way to express whatever uh, Naoki Yoshida said. But I like that it wasn't ruled out, because that's something I really, really want, and it's good to, this is the first time, this is the closest we're going to get to it's happening. Like, maybe when they, FanFest comes around, they want to announce that. I don't know what they're going to do. 
uh, but it was good to actually hear that. The big thing that was actually spoken about was a new piece of content that was actually mentioned, I think it was at the last live letter or maybe the one before even. They said they were working on a piece of content that was available for anywhere from one to four people. And we kind of didn't know what that meant at the time. And now we have a better idea of it. I thought that was the treasure hunting dungeon. There's a new type of dungeon called deep dungeons that are coming out. The very first one is going to be the palace of the dead. Now they called it the deep dungeon and then called the dungeon palace of the dead. They didn't confirm there would be more deep dungeons. They eventually confirmed that they will be, they will be adding new floors to the palace of the dead. So for now, I'm just going to call the piece of content, the palace of the dead, just to be clear. Now, uh, to clarify what I said by floors there, it's actually a bottomless dungeon, at least according to the exact description that was on the screen. Um, although he did say there was a deepest dungeon, which makes me think of darkest dungeon. So uh, maybe there is an, I mean, there obviously has to be an end if they're adding more floors. I don't know if that meant more floor types and more end, but it's a theoretically lore-wise bottomless dungeon. It, it will have, it will actually have a finite end when it comes to its first implementation. Uh, it's got random layouts, so uh, you'll, you know, every time you go in, even if you're redoing like a floor that you just hadn't completed before, it'll be different than it was the time before. And there's going to be effects that you can grab. There's going to be effects that will weaken you or strengthen you or maybe weaken or strengthen your opponents. And this can be done anywhere from one to four players. It is a piece of content that can, can be done completely solo. So it's definitely a piece of content that I'm looking forward to because it means that I can hop in with, I could go in with two people. You could go tank and healer. You could try to solo the whole thing as a warrior, which I'm sure will be completely possible. <laughs> uh, or as a scholar or something like that. You could try to do it as a monk. Or you could go in with, you know, you can go with the standard group of four. You could really do whatever you want. Uh, and the bigger thing with it is, is when you go in, your progress is very different from the rest of your character's progress, which is, I, you know, that's a big thing with MMOs, always trying to make you feel like you're progressing. This seems to be the gimmick for this one. You actually start at level one when you enter the dungeon. Now, when he first said that, I thought he meant floor one. He legitimately means level one. It will, it will, while you're in that dungeon, your progress is I'm a level one character. Uh, and because of that, it means you don't need to necessarily have everyone at level 60 going in with all the best gear. Uh, it means that it's something that even if you're bringing a friend back to the game, he stop playing maybe in 2.5 or something, you can hop in with them and you can enjoy that content together. On top of that, um, the, the gear that you actually bring in, the item level of your gear is mostly irrelevant. It's negligible was the word that they use. And that it's really going to be about finding items inside of the deep dungeon in order to progress farther. So it's its own like like separate game almost like you're making a whole new character in a different game almost or you're taking a character from one game and playing another with it. So it it's it sounds like they want it to last a pretty long time. With that, they want the progress to take a, a while, I'm assuming. Uh, and that progress, by the way, auto saves. Uh, it saves at the end of every floor. If you die before you reach the end or you reach the beginning of the next floor, then you'll be set back to the last auto saved point, uh, which. They didn't make that clear if the progress is wiped for the entire, like, like if you get right to the end and you die on the very last enemy, do I now have to now do a, an entirely random floor that's different from what I just did? Is it, you know, that wasn't made entirely clear, uh, but it said on the, you know, it said progress autosaves at the end of every floor. If you are KO'd, you will be sent back to the last autosaved point. So uh, I want a little bit more information. I'm sure we will, especially considering that this is actually something we'll probably see in a live letter after 3.3, because this actually isn't content until 3.35. So we have whatever we're getting in 3.3. You know, we have the treasure hunting dungeons. We have, you know, a new primal. We have new dungeons. We have the new 24 man, new story, all that stuff, you know, stuff we've grown to know and expect with, uh, with Final Fantasy 14. But we also have uh, this coming in 3.35. That's also the point where season two of the feast begins. So these are two pieces of content that are going to line up pretty well. Um, and then on top of that, they have, uh, no, no, they just went into a few more details. Like there's bosses on certain floors. Uh, they're going to add the more floors later. They're also going to add a score ranking where if you go in solo, it'll track your progress and it'll keep track of who's made it the furthest, who's the highest level. And it's per job. So like, because I immediately thought warriors will just win the whole thing. Uh, so it, like it would only compare warriors to warriors and then you can compare monks to monks, etc., etc. So pretty cool. It's not like a hardcore piece of content. It sounds like it's kind of designed with the hardcore in mind, but it is more of an approachable type of content. They want it to be something for people of all levels so they can jump in and play together or they can play alone. You know, it's, it's, it's something that is actually there for you to choose how you want to play the game and how you want to progress. And you know what? I think that's something that a lot of people will enjoy with Final Fantasy XIV. So let me know what you think about 
the Palace of the Dead, about some of the other questions. They brought up chocobos again, too, like bringing them into dungeons. Like, there's a few things I omitted from my notes here just because I was like, I, they don't need to know that they said that again. We're working on it still. Things like that. Let me know what you think about the idea. Uh, I know a lot of you are going to compare it to Nizel Isle, although I don't know if it's entirely comparable. Uh, we'll find out more about that in the future. Definitely excited myself, so be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And I will see you guys when I'm back from PAX East. I will have another video probably coming before that point, so just be on the lookout for that. Anyway, thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, take care. And here's the awkward part. Or I don't have my editing software, so here's the real end. <laughs>